Okay, so it was let's get down to brass tacks. It was the New South Wales election last night. <coughs> we now have a Labour government wall to wall across Australia. Well, Every, don't apart from Tasmania, about Tasmania, a little Tasmania. Across let's mainland Australia, it's Apple all Labour now. So Labour, let's see how socialism works. Let's see Australia. Well, let's see what this is like. This grand experiment, <laughs> Rita. Well, we've before this is what a lot of the political pundits and some of the analysis we've already seen which anytime Labor wins there seems to be this assumption that it's the final verdict Australia's made up its mind Australia's changed it's everything's uh, different now we were here in 2007 in fact if you look go back Tasmania was Labor as well so it was a clean sweep and then we saw how that went after a few years. So uh, these are different characters in power. Things can go very differently. But you cannot uh, deny that this was an absolutely resounding victory for Minns. He was always a very capable candidate. He presented well. He's not threatening. I know a lot of Conservative voters who were not too upset about his hmm. victory so and of course yeah, we well, know that's the, the problem for me that is the problem for me that speech by Dominic Perrottet they're now saying what a great speech it was by Dominic Perrottet last night where he's basically saying oh fantastic you've got a great premier here we don't want Labour now we've got Labour thanks Liberals that's what you gave us thanks Matt Keane thanks Dominic Perrottet you've given us a Labour government we don't want one that's not what the people of New South Wales want. OK, well, they might have voted for it only because you didn't give them a Conservative alternative. Well, I mean, look, it's one thing to say that, you know, they didn't give enough of a Conservative alternative. Well, they enough. didn't. Well, they, all right, sure, fine, they didn't. But it's also really interesting to note that Labour went and, you know, ran essentially an identical Dom Perrottet candidate. They ran Chris Binns yes. from the Labour right. So the idea that this means that there's some sort of massive leftward shift in the electorate is, you know, I Absolutely. think a nonsense. You're going to hear, hear that a lot from commentators. That said, that said, the Liberals have a lot of problems here, and they go beyond just Matt Key. And I mean, it's one thing to say, you know, Matt Keane is terrible and treacherous, and he absolutely is, and he has dragged the party far to the left in New South Wales, far to the left where it should be. But, you know, the Libs also need to deal with a lot of issues they have. They have not figured out a way to cut through to younger voters. The fact that a seat like uh, Willoughby on the lower North Shore has uh, a 20 percent swing against it and is now on a knife edge shows that they have a real problem here in terms of getting people over the line. I think, you know, the fact that they haven't done more to over, you know, 12 years here, nine years federally, get young people into houses. You know, they've lost the millennial argument there. Labor has gone here, and this is really important. This is what Peter Dutton and whoever winds up taking over the Libs in New South Wales needs to know. Labor has put together a coalition of millennials, migrants, renters and public servants. It's a very powerful coalition now that they've got, and they need to counteract that and start picking these groups off. First millennials and migrants, I think, are your first two people, renters as well, getting people, you know, into that home ownership dream. That's where people really want to see action. This is practical stuff that the Liberal Party needs to go back to basics on aspiration for the individual and their achievement as well as, of course, all the bigger stuff about culture and economics yeah, but hang and the on. environment. Sorry, sorry, we have seen now, we have seen year after year now, every time the Liberal Party goes woke, every time the Liberal Party, uh, you know, in 2013 we had a Tony Abbott conservative landslide. There hasn't been one like it since, and yet we've gone... The Liberal Party has gone, OK, in Western Australia, in Victoria, every time they've gone to an election, you put up these woke, pathetic characters. We had Dominic Perrottet backing the voice. We've had climate change garbage for you, uh, brought about by the Liberal Party. No wonder you keep losing. You're useless. You're useless. Well, Become you a Conservative at... Party again. No wonder Labor are marching into power across the country. Well, it's not just 2013. You can look at 2019, the... <laughs> unwinnable election that Scott Morrison managed to win by providing by a genuine alternative exactly. where he wasn't prioritising things like net zero and emissions. And remember, that was the climate change election. Yes, That's what yes, Phil absolutely. Shorten called it. That's why the media called it. And he prioritised cheap and reliable energy and somehow won. Last election, net zero. And yep. then he can't really argue the cost of living issues that energy prices bring up because, well, he's on the pretty much the same side as yeah, Labor really. in prioritising emissions. And you look at Victoria, I mean, Victoria should be a, a model of what to avoid, but James, New South Wales 
how late did they pre-select some of those candidates? Oh, yeah. well, I mean, how can you expect them to have any impact when you've got a retiring uh, sitting member well known, you've got some new face, and they're given no time at all yeah, to well campaign. Yeah, well, this is a huge problem. The New South Wales division of the Liberal Party is an absolute mess, and a lot of it comes down to that whole moderate faction that you know goes out, plays games, you know, does all sorts of stuff, and they, and they would rather you know fight conservatives than they would yeah. win elections. But you know, 2019, remember too. Bill Shorten didn't make it easier for the Labour Party, too. He came out and said, you know, he was going to go after Frank and Krenz. He came out and, you know, really... Yeah, but told, much more policies than we've now got under told, Anthony exactly, Albanese. Exactly, exactly. And you Albanese know. won because he shut up about those sorts of things and didn't reveal what he was going to do until yeah, he precisely. came into office. As did Minns. As did Minns. Minns mentioned in the debate here on Sky, which, by the way, I thought Perrottet won, not the other bloke, Minns mentioned a treaty. He said, oh, yeah, I support a treaty. No one picked him up on it. Why was wasn't Dominic Paraday down his throat going, what do you mean? A treaty in New South Wales? What? What does that mean? Does that mean uh, rent? Does that mean yeah, going to affect our rent? Reparations? What does it mean? Not a word. In fact, Dominic Paraday says, oh, I support the voice. I support the voice. We don't have any conser serious conservative politicians running the mainstream parties. And that's a disaster for Australia. An absolute disaster, folks. Well, I can tell you in Victoria, there was no debate about a treaty because Victoria's having one and the Liberals are on board as of they course. are with every Everything else. So, so you this have pretends to give that we a have a conservative side of politics. We do not have we a have conservative a side of politics. We do have Peter Dutton, who's the last hope of the side. He's got to come out. He's got to oppose the voice. He's got to look at this message now. If you want a bit of comedy, forget Monty Python. Watch Michael Fotius last night trying to spin <laughs> the disastrous result for the Liberals on his brilliant strategy of a, of a coalition of moderates and a broad church. Forget it, guys. You're a disaster. Woke has destroyed the Liberal Party, only Peter Dutton can save it, and time is running out, let me tell you. James. <laughs> well, that whole... Do we have the Fodius bit here? Uh, no. Well, Seriously, did my head in. I had to turn was the a, telly over that it was point. A, it was like, yeah, I can't it, watch this. It it's was too a, silly for me. It, it, <laughs> it was a great uh, little bit of political comedy on what was a very sort of weird yes. night. But, you know, also, like... It, the, the, the results are sort of all over the shop, too, because, you know, where did One Nation wind up coming in? They've had a bit of an advance in the lower house, but, you know, they didn't take any of the seats. There was some polling a few months ago that said, oh, they were going to clean up all these seats um, across, uh, you know, all these seats where they were running people. People didn't come out and vote for One Nation. I suspect part of it is because Mark Latham said he wouldn't go into a coalition with the, uh, the Liberal Party, so he dealt himself down to a protest vote, and I think that that also created a whole another layer of he noise. He said he in, wouldn't go into a coalition. With Matt Keane. If it, uh, he, said, he said he wouldn't go into a coalition with the Liberal Party if Matt if, Keane was, if still, Matt Keane was yeah. still in there. Listen, I just want to quickly play you a bit of Peter Credlin last night, who was superb, as always, uh, arguing with um, some Sheila from the Liberal Party, a woke oh, Sheila. I'm not sure who it was. Anyway, um, that's just me. Um, I'm sure... Others can tell us. Natalie Ward. Thank you, Natalie Ward. Um, this is the nub of the matter, and Peter got straight down to it. The Liberal Party has to decide now. Are you the Conservative Party of Australia or are you this mishmash Labour light trying to copy everything that Labour does? Have a listen to this little bit of the argument. If more Liberals that got spent more time working their seats and, and not well, shopping around for other seats, who was you'd all be in a better shape. And our policies were conservative, and aimed were at hopeless. families. No, I'll take and there's shoot. nothing I'll take more conservative than aiming your policies at, at, at families. And he level, balanced that out by It wasn't at families, it was checkbook politics. No, it this is the battle that the Liberal Party, they've been putting it off and putting it off. Peter Dutton, stamp your authority now and say, that's it. The woke experiment is over. It has been a disaster across this nation, state and federally, a disaster, OK? Kick the punters out, the, the woke punters, get rid of them, return to being a solid conservative Menzian parties. That's what Australia desperately now needs. There's no more excuses, Rita. Can I make a prediction? Mm. That won't happen. I think what will happen <laughs> is they will listen to the analysis coming from the bulk of the uh, leftist media, as they always do, that they need to be far more moderate, i.e. left-wing. They need to be a, uh, that's a version been so of Labor successful. Party. But they will listen to it because that's what... I've seen this happen yeah, in other states know, where you I look know. at WA, you look at South Australia, you look at Victoria. Victoria went to the last state election with the Liberal Party 
not having a single centre-right policy. They backed the Andrews government on environment. So they had in, they had energy policies, uh, no, no. emissions targets, bolder than Anthony Albanese's government. They backed them on the treaty, backed them on all the trans matters, and their spending promises were bigger than Labor. So arguably, you could say they were sitting to the left of Labor. And what did yep. happen? They got trounced because people who support Labor have Labor to vote for. They've got the Greens to vote for. You need to actually provide an alternative for everybody else who right now doesn't have a, a choice. And, and that's going well, to be the example that they're going to follow. Look, I mean, I think that Peter Dutton has probably two weeks at the most to come out and just simply Opposed say, the voice, that, say not that, happening. That, that the voice is uh, that the voice is a no from them. And, well, let's and, talk about that. Paul Kelly, we've, we've yeah. seen... I mean, we're we're talk about Chris, Chris can I just make one other point? Yep, can I just make yep. one other point, though? You know, it's all really well and good for people out there to say, oh, you know, the Liberal Party has gone too woke. People, go out and join your local branch. Like, if you think the party isn't going in the direction you think it should... Get involved. Join up. You know, we know the party involvement on all major parties is way, way, way down. What does that mean? That means that the worst sort of political careerists are going to wind up taking over these things. You know, a truly conservative thing to do if you're a conservative is get involved and, you know, make your voice heard and, and do that, not just let other people yeah, and hope but, but, that but, the party the is going to come James, around. But the reality, James, is they have the, left. I know so many people who have left of course the they Liberal have. Party they have. because the photiest factions or whoever they are, I don't know who all these people are, who pull the strings and insert, like, a Manchurian candidates into the Liberal Party, all these well, hardcore Robert, leftists if like you leave, if, you leave, if you leave the battlefield, you lose. Sure, If you absolutely. leave the battlefield, you lose. And Conservatives, you know, need to do more, I think, in this country than just simply absolutely. You know, say, yeah, this sucks, this is terrible, all these lefties keep running the show. Well, you know what? Get out there and fight if that's what you believe. But well, James, one person who did fight is Catherine Deves. We'll be talking to her shortly. But, but I think part of the reason reason why Conservatives are also upset is because we've just had 12 years of Liberal rule in this state. We've had consecutive terms in federal government before Albanese won. And what did they actually do to advance Conservative agenda? Nothing. Occasionally they'll say no to the woke push, but that seems to be about it. When they're 100%. in power, they waste that time. When Labor are in, they do not waste a single the day. Look at the, what Anthony Albanese has done. In a, less than a year, what he has managed to put forward all Labor leftist agenda. So you might not agree with it, but at least he's fighting the fight for his side of politics. The Conservatives prefer to fight amongst themselves and that's where the passion seems to be. And they're not even Conservatives. Like you said, you've got imposters We, in we are now in a socialist country. Get ready, <laughs> ready for the ride, folks. Socialism is here and uh, they're going to love ramming Can I make one final point? That's what they're going to be doing. I'm going to make one final point. Yep. So, you, know, you know, in 1976, let's go back to America. In 1976, the Republican brand was absolutely toxic because of Watergate. You know, they just lost Nixon. They had Gerald Ford come in. Jimmy Carter comes in. You've got four years of mayhem, chaos, economic disaster, foreign policy disaster. Four years later, Ronald Reagan comes in. Yes. Twelve years of Republican yes. rule um, based on conservatism. And you know what else? Optimism. And you know what? This is the thing that conservatives in this country need to rediscover is optimism and positivity. Because and that, that, that has is to come the from the leader. That has to come from Peter Dutton, and Peter Dutton has to now start fighting for values. That's what it's all about: values.